ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂಧ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಾಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ ಮಿಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುವೈ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪಕಧಾಮಯ್ಯ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಾಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತಾಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ್ಚ ೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥನ್ವಿ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪದ ಸಹಗಣ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿ ತಂಚ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಂಶಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತೀತ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ we are all today <clears throat> most blessed for having been able to get this opportunity to come together <clears throat> to celebrate what probably is the most exalted of all events <clears throat> in human history we have come together to <clears throat> reinforce <clears throat> and become more deeply aware of why we are all here why we are becoming devotees what is it to become actually a devotee and what is the goal of our life so this day <clears throat> facilitates a deeper understanding of the very purpose of our very existence in this material world renowned das tagore as we know has loudly proclaimed that there are so many events so many days in the year which are very auspicious undoubtedly ekadashi akshay tritiya appearance of great souls <clears throat> however the two days the appearance of lord nityananda and the appearance of lord chaitanya have been singled out as the most munificent of all days of the entire year it is today 526 years <clears throat> when this divine event took place the appearance of shri gauranga mahaprabhu <clears throat> the blessed day of gaur purnima what is it that makes this day so very special 
and why is it the most worshipable of all days for all mankind no not all mankind for all living beings <clears throat> the answer to this question lies in understanding within our core of our hearts the deep significance of the appearance of lord chaitanya as to who actually he is and what does he really represent and how is that relevant to our lives shri radha and krishna are probably the most misunderstood people in the entire creation <clears throat> we are misunderstood for small things but they are almost always misunderstood av jananti mam muda people cannot understand krishna even more <clears throat> misunderstood is shrimati radharani so what to talk of a personality who has combined radha and krishna he is even more misunderstood <laughs> because it, is, it becomes a more and more of a mystery in fact what is this gauranga mahaprabhu but because human mind cannot rationally understand these spiritual truths therefore we are given scriptures what is not understandable through rationality logic <clears throat> is understood through the eyes of seeing things through the scripture shastra chakshusha so we know that the event of mahapur coming to this world is a very 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 rare event the shastra has informed us that there are four yugas everyone knows satya tirtha dwapar and kali and to deliver the people of this world there are four prescriptions for these four ages to deliver mankind from the cycle of birth and death krite dhayate vishnu tritayam yato makhai dwapare parichayayam kalauta dhari kirtana in every kali yuga as in every satya yuga huh? <coughs> there is chanting of hari krishna maha mantra and meditation respectively so why is this kali yuga so special because we must understand that in every kali yuga there is chanting of hari krishna mantra it is not specific only to this particular yuga in which we are living today and it is always a yellow colored incarnation a golden avatar who comes shuk uh shweta rakta pita and shama these are the four colors of the four avatars in the four yugas so the avatar in kali yuga is always golden in color and he is always called as gaur narayan narayan is come as gauranga and he delivers all souls by the loud chanting of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare however this event of mahapurush coming in the year 1580 1586 526 years ago was not the same appearance of gaur narayan it is probably for human calculation something just never happened before when you talk of kumbh mela the last last time kumbh mela was called as maha maha kumbh that means once in 144 years that event comes again those constellations appear again so that also looks like a very far off thing once in 144 years so people go because at least i will not be living for the next 144 years so let me go and take a bath <clears throat> so people so it's a big event in terms of time hmm? what talk of 1000 years 5000 years 10000 years million years event once in a million years event no 10 million no 100 million no 1000 million years no this event of mahaprabhu's appearing as swayam bhagwan does not take place even once in 1000 million years hmm? that's how very rare this event is what is the difference <clears throat> the difference is that even though swayam bhagwan comes once in billions of years hmm, he gives a type of extraordinary special mercy which is not available in any other kali yuga in the previous kali yugas when you chant the hari krishna mantra you can go back to godhead but never beyond the vaikuntha planets that is the limits of the progression of human excellence and nothing beyond so the mellows of 
the highest realm of krishna loka golok vrindavan remains a exclusive commodity never known never understood and never available to any jeevatma for billions of years <clears throat> therefore it is said anar pita charim chirat karunaya avtirna kalau what is not been for long 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 time almost never given before that is chaitanya mahaprabhu when he comes here he gives the mellows of the type of love which is so special the relationship between the jivatma and god is only one fold that is a relationship of pure love but love is of different realms it is not the same thing there are different realms of love hmm? the type of love which is experienced by the residents of golok vrindavan the highest planet is so extraordinary special because that love is so powerful and we know in this world love is a very powerful force even in this world the way we love it, the world we live in we know that love is very powerful hmm? in fact lust is so powerful what talk of love lust is so powerful isn't it the negative force of lust destroys wars all sorts of things you know practically the whole world which obviously are all the, the basic component of all that governs everything and churns every propels every activity is lust and we can see the world events are all properly propelled by lust but imagine that pure force of lust on into love what can it can do mm -hmm. it is so powerful so no undoubtedly the love is the most powerful force the type of love of braja is so special that it subdues god himself the supreme godhead becomes absolutely subservient to any practitioner who possesses the commodity of that pure love of golok vrindavan and obviously therefore krishna does not give that love to anybody virala santakati pai it is very rare to get that love because who why the why would krishna want to get subservient to anybody and everybody doesn't make any sense <laughs> hmm. so that is the type of love which gorama ru has come to give <clears throat> however we must understand that gorama ru is coming here to nodia district in bengal huh? is not a secular small contained <clears throat> uh, narrow minded event of bengal or india mahapurush event of coming to this world is actually creating huge waves on the entire cosmos in the entire universe it is the most important cosmic activity in time why because shri navadeep dham is not a place of this material world it is the spiritual center of this particular brahman dimension we are living namesharanya is the material center of this entire universe we are in the seventh planetary system the middle planetary system so obviously the hub is brahma sent uh, the hub fixed itself at namesharanya and therefore sages had their katha uh, krishna katha bhagavat katha at namesharanya because the impact of what was done in the center with it, by centrifugal spiritual force emanates throughout the entire creation that's value of the center because it has got centrifugal force but now deep is the spiritual center of this universe the spiritual rajdhani the capital of this universe therefore if any event has to impact the entire brahmanda it must start from navadeep the supreme godhead selects that place for his divine descent in this world navadeep is extremely special to gaudiya vaishnavas and to the whole world it is the only place which is not made by krishna <laughs> krishna has created the entire creation aham sarvasa prabhu matas pram pravartate huh? krishna has declared everything which you see and you don't see the manifest and unmanifest universes everything comes from krishna and this is absolutely a, a, a statement of uh, authority and the lord himself is saying it and everything comes from him but navadeep is created by the beloved hands of our eternal mother shrimati radharani 
it is the only place created by someone other than shri krishna <clears throat> you know to attract shri krishna away from the other devotees the other gopi friends huh? she makes navadweep this is i had to understand this what does it really mean it, it, <clears throat> i got insight that it is just like shri prabhupad who had so many powerful intimate disciples of his and to attract prabhupad's attention a disciple had to do something very special to attract his attention he would have distributed a lot of books like a big temple a big preaching program because i'm coming to your center for 3 days so a trap robber's attention was not easy because he was he had so many things to do but if some disciple had a very special event if new vrindavan said that they going to make a farm community just like vrindavan it was on to attract robber's attention he stayed for 10 days and gave the bhagavat pravachans there yeah. so a disciple had to attract robber's attention by doing some spectacular service similarly shrimati radharani in the same mood has to do something special to attract krishna attention from other competitor and devotees in the same mood uh, serving the master krishna is radharani is uh, swami just like shri prabhupad is our swami our master so she created this beautiful land of navadweep with the most choicest of trees uh, birds rivers ponds fragrant flowers and breezes uh, adorned with the moats made of ganga and jamuna waters and exquisitely special and then sri krishna who is always a possessor of the flute murli dhar as he is called <coughs> this time shrimad radharani starts playing the flute krishna attracts shrimad radharani and all other devotees by his transcendental notes of his flute but this time shrimad radharani took that same flute and played and the ambrosial nectar was so enchanting that krishna the all attractive was attracted to the flute of shrimati radharani who is madan mohan mohini Krishna having come there to Navadweep, it was so happy to see this place. And he said, "I will stay here always." And anyone who serves us here in this place will get love, which is similar to that which is experienced in the land of Vrindavan. And all the tirthas of the entire universe will manifest over here. Thus, Krishna blessed Navadweep to be the most extraordinary place in this creation. And just like Krishna is Purna. avatari mahaprabhu is purna avatari sim navadeep also is purna it is complete there is badrinath there is kedarnath there is shri rangam all the holy places in the entire creation are there in this tract of 168 miles <coughs> of navadeep it is a purna dham the all benefits which come in other places will come by simply staying this holy place So you can see Mahaprabhu is special. His descent is special. The place he descends is special. His purpose, everything Mahaprabhu is extremely special. Only thing ordinary is our understanding. That is the only thing ordinary. Is we just don't understand these the depth of these transcendental events and its deep significance to ourselves and to the world. <clears throat> the scriptures have said it very very long time that mahaprabhu will come maharaj nemi we heard in the morning today to Kar- uh, karbajan muni i spoke this to maharaj nemi millions of years ago this is this, this is given krishna varnam tusha krishnam sanga pangastra parshadam yagya sankirtana prayer yanti hi sumeda sah this has been given there are many many such references and anyone can guess convinced that this is not something which is a created god like the so many gods who living in around us here <clears throat> he is the supreme personality of godhead without any doubt <clears throat> we must understand also simultaneously as we understanding the lord's descent as to what are the events taking place in navadweep when the earth planet here on the bhoma level what are the events which are being churned up <coughs> to bring the lord's descent <clears throat> just like namadeep is created by shrimati radharani it is blessed in a very special way by brahma because brahma at that time realizing the lord's descent would take place here in the future made it the most opulent place in the entire world 
it was not America. There was no America at that time, 15th century. It was not discovered still. And it, of course, it was there. It, not that it's not there, it was there. <laughs> but it was a forest <coughs> with practically just Aboriginal, you know, Aborigines staying there. Hmm? <coughs> the Red Indians were staying there. Anyway, so, <coughs> but Brahma made the most opulent place of Navadip with the riches and natural resources and pure waters and everything which would be required for the prosperity of human beings was provided in abundance in the land of Navadvip. And Mother Saraswati also cooperated by sending the most brilliant scholars of the entire world to Navadvip. It was a high seat of learning, the center for academic excellence of the time. The top place was Navadvip, unrivaled, unchallenged. There were other places like Kashmir and Mithila also, <coughs> and in Dakshin Bharat, Chiranga Kshetra also were seats of learning. But not as <coughs> uh, acclaimed uh, for their <coughs> uh, prestige as much as Navadvip. So while there are, we understand that there are not one or two, but tens of thousands of millions of scholars here. <coughs> so you can imagine a place is like totally people are brainy, extremely high IQs, huh? brilliant deciphering of knowledge from scriptures. Sanskrit was the way of just life. Sanskrit was just the conversational language. It was not a learned language. It was just a, it's a natural language for everyone to speak about. <clears throat> so there were great scholars like <clears throat> Mishras and Chakravartis and <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> big, 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 big scholars. All had their schools. They're called Tola, Tola, Tol, schools. And the prestige depended upon a student coming as getting his certificate of <clears throat> academics uh, completion of his uh, degrees from which toll from which school which teacher gave you that particular particular certificate if you got it from this cert cert person then it was very high from that person it was still higher so there was a huge amount of you can imagine like you have classes like you know so many classes here agrawals and Kala shukla and, and <laughs> all these classes are there and all this so many and every every suburb there are like hundreds of classes and, and all offering various you know attractive 70 percent discount and this and that <clears throat> So many things. So it's like so many classes of excellent teachers and therefore there's a huge amount of what naturally? Rivalry, competition. Huh? So while people were very opulent, a lot of money, there was just a lot of rivalry, fights, competitive spirit, <coughs> huge amount of pride. <coughs> and the thing which was the most remarkable was there was no God in the picture. <coughs> There was no Vishnu, there was no Narayan. Imagine a place where everyone reads scripture, including Gita and Bhagavat, but there's no mention of Krishna or Narayan Bhakti. Hmm? To that extent they were covered. Uh, Durga worship, Manasa Devi, snake, snake worshippers and worshipping scorpions and huge lavish <coughs> child marriages and so many things like that. So it's a very opulent place. People are apparently very happy. But a devotee understands that this is happiness or the so-called happiness in the mode of Tamagun. <clears throat> or at best Rajagun. And because of the absence of Vishnu or Narayan worship, the devotees were not at all happy. The first associate of Mahaprabhu to be coming to this world is Sri Advait Acharya. Who was 60 years elder to Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. He was a very old man even when Mahaprabhu was born. <clears throat> so seeing the state of Navadvip was breaking his heart and he took it upon himself to really create an environment which will bring the Lord down to this world it is explained that reading a sloka from the Gautimya Tantra which explains how simply by doing two simple things now to get the Lord in this world is not easy it is the most, rather it is the most difficult thing to ever you can imagine. Getting the Lord here, even to get the, get the Jamuna flowing back through it to its root is so difficult. <laughs> even Jamuna is not willing to come. You know, a lot of forces opposing her descent from Haryana to Vrindavan. Huh? What of creating, you know, bringing the Lord here? Uh, this is an impossible task. And millions of people together cannot even do this. But, as Samadhi was saying in the morning, I think that sometimes the biggest problems 
I mean, the biggest challenges have the most simple solutions because there is immense power in simplicity, <laughs> which is not there in complexity. Huh? <clears throat> the simple method of offering just Ganga Jal and Tulsi leaves to Vishnu in the form of Shalagram creates powerful effect. Have you read that slokam Adhita Charya said on the bank of the Ganga? And please understand, he's not just an ordinary human being who's just loudly calling out. He is Mahavishnu Sankarshan, the quadruple expansion. He's Sadashiv combined. When he cries out loudly, huh, it is not just decibel power. <clears throat> The power of his intense hankering to save the world. It is the power of his compassion, which is so overwhelming a force, it penetrates the entire universe and cuts through the Brahma Jyoti, enters <coughs> the abode of Mahavishnu. And he hears the sound of Adhijara's loud crying, and his heart melts. In fact, in, Mahap in Gaur Leela, we understand that. It is a Leela which is just as Nodip is full, Krishna is full in himself, Mahaprabhu is full in himself. Simply all the, 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 the participants in this Leela are also all complete. Every other devotee from every other avatar has joined the stream of devotees in Gaur Leela. We can't imagine this situation, rather we should try to imagine the situation whereby we have people like a Mahavishnu descending. Huh? Virchandra is Sridhasha Vishnu descending. Thakur Haridas as Brahma descending. Adhacharya as Sadashiv descending. Huh? Who are these people? Huh? Then you have Pradyumna, then you have Rasikananda, you came later on. Hmm? These most powerful people. Huh? When Mahaprabhu came to this world, when he was born, Nashinda's wife came, Vashishtha's wife came. You know? I mean, the most you can imagine, the most important people in creation are all gathered in Navadvip. Why? Because they are starting an event in cosmic time that is going to last for thousands of millions of years. They come to give a type of mercy which is going to inundate. They have come to create a tsunami of love of God. So these are all preparatory events. Before the tsunami can actually start flooding the entire world and that tsunami practically began in 1966 from Srila Prabhupada and when it actually started manifesting out of India. The waves are not anymore just in Bengal. Just the wave would see, you see in New York and then it's in Japan and you can see it in Australia. You can see these waves everywhere. The tsunami was created like that. But before the tsunami starts, there are a lot of events taking place which are unseen. And it is because of these great, 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 supremely great personalities coming to create this event. The tsunami of love of God, which can inundate not this world, not this planetary system, but the entire universe. <clears throat> and of course, we want to get blown off by this tsunami. We will be most happy to just blown off by the tsunami and just, this <clears throat> ocean of bliss. So, <clears throat> the Tara is crying like this in Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> the event is that there is a great devotee called Zupendra Mishra, huh, who is living in Bangladesh. He has seven sons. One of his sons is Jagannath Mishra. He comes to Navadip to study. <coughs> and another great personality called as Nilamar Chakravati Thakur, who is Nanada Chen, Gargacharya of Krishna Leela. His daughter Sachi Mata. So Jagannath Mishra is there. They got, both get married. Sachi Mata gets married. <coughs> and they didn't get a son. <coughs> they didn't get a child for a long time. Sevo is staying on the bank of the Ganga to, to invoke auspiciousness. Eight daughters are born in a row. But in the early infancy, they all die. Imagine the trauma of a mother and a father who have eight children, beautiful children, illustrious children, but all do not even survive for the first year of their birthday. Imagine the heartbreak. Huh? It was a very heartbreaking situation. But they intensified their devotion to Shalagram, Damodar Sheila, and then Vishru was born, the first child, who is the expansion of Balram. They intensified the devotion even further. And then, in the year 1485, in the month of Magh, January, huh, the entire spiritual abode 
please appreciate this descent of the lord is so transcendental we know the gita says janma karma chame dibyam hmm? the entire spiritual abode descends into the heart of jagannath mishra he is in the body the spiritual abode of the lord from his heart this abode this brilliant light is transferred to the heart of sachi mata she is now embodying the entire spiritual abode within her body descends to her womb she is supremely fulgent just like devi was the fulgent in the jail <coughs> of kamsa and special things started happening from that time people started giving so much charity respect and so much of love and affection to janata mishra on the roads and just overwhelmed by so many gifts to people who didn't even know sachi mata started seeing all celestial beings in the sky and in her dreams offering prayers of devotion to the child in her womb in the minds of the people around there was a lot of happiness was there everything getting very very auspicious one month two months three months four months six months nine months have passed ordinarily this is the time to come out nine months and nine days ayurveda says oh but no 10 months 11 months 12 months <laughs> obviously that is anxiety shall is not coming out so horoscope is made by nilam chakravarti tagore said he is waiting for the very auspicious event please do not worry after 13 long months of waiting and the this for the special event with the lord waiting for it was lunar eclipse why lunar eclipse it has been explained so nicely hmm? because lunar eclipse is the most inauspicious time in the world <laughs> because at that time the smartas the so called religious people they all understand that oh we got so much of wealth and name and fame and power and prestige and so much of followers if anything inauspicious happens to our life we are finished ashub huh? so they want to protect themselves from this ashub situation which is created by the <coughs> by rahu covering the moon it was rahu is thinking other way so oh, the moon of gauru chandra is coming <laughs> this stupid moon you know with all these marks you don't need this moon just cover it up <clears throat> so rahu is having his own calculation of why he wants to get a lunar eclipse because he doesn't want this moon to you know have anything to do with this when this supreme moon of this world comes in but then all the people of navadeep are gathered in mother ganga and all are having their holy bath with that they know that they know even though not video they know that they have to avoid inauspiciousness and they even chanting loudly hari bol hari bol hari bol hari bol hari bol you can hear sounds of hare krishna mantra everywhere hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram ram so you can imagine the ganga all along navadeep and beyond not few hundred thousand but millions of people head down this is like a huge the biggest kumbh mela ever in one sense <laughs> everybody millions of people students teachers parents everyone deciding that all are in the ganga at the, on the same time you live in the house you know get all those negative rays and whatever this whatever is there everyone is chanting loudly and this makes the devotees supremely happy they never anything seen anything like this never heard anything like this that all the devotees all the people who are non devotees even the muslims who, who hate you know muslim rule was there you know, they, they hated the hindus very badly they were very cruel to them they, they also looking you know, they also very happy i don't look at these guys you know, they, they were chiding with them joking ye log bhi hare krishna bolte they also saying hare krishna Huh? so everyone was chanting god's holy names at that point of time when there is resounding tumultuous sound of hari naam and which is somewhere around this time little this is, we have to really put our hearts into the situation it was the same day it was 1486 falgun month it was a sunday <laughs> on that day and the lord appeared just like you sitting on the in 1986 we were at this 500th anniversary of the lord's appearance with radhanath swami and i dictionally remember this event when i was sitting on the bank of the ganga and we saw on the eastern horizon a huge moon when the moon is down it is very big and then it becomes sort of small as it goes in the center the huge yellow colored moon is rising from the eastern horizon 
So just like the moon arises from the ocean, from the unlimited ocean of bhakti, represented by Mother Sachi, the moon of Gaurav Chandra arose and came into this world. Shri Gauranga Mahaprabhu ki! Gauranga Mahaprabhu Abhirbhav ki! What a beautiful, beautiful child. Like no one has seen before. The ultimate embodiment of all beauty. In a small form, maybe arm length long, every limb exquisitely beautiful. Nilama Chakra Bhagur came and saw, he was amazed. He saw all the signs of a Mahapurush. We are not fanatics, we don't believe that this is God because you know somebody else, somebody says it, but he had all the 32 signs. There are 32 signs in the body of a Mahapurush. Five broad, seven things which are red in color, three things which are grave, three things which are small in size. Everything is, everything is a science. Krishna consciousness is a science. It's not a science, it's a perfect science. A non-changeable <coughs> science. Never changes with time. Five things, for example, were red in color. What were they? His eyes were red. Upper lips were red, lower lip was red, the palate was red, the arms were tender, soft, red, the palms of his soul were red, huh? and his nails were red. Huh? Three things were three things are called to be grave. <clears throat> his navel was grave, deep. His voice was grave and deep. And his very existence was grave. This is described. <clears throat> And it was very evident, the, the horoscope is given. Anybody who knows something about horoscopes, they can see this is given in the Chaitanya Chaitanya Amrita. What signs, what lagna was there and Simha lagna and so many details are given. Right? And they can study the horoscope of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Maharasarasvi Thakur has studied it in detail. <coughs> Actually, we don't have to study it, it's already given. <laughs> because astrology is a very difficult science. <coughs> so it, is, it, is, it, it, it was very evident that this is not a human being. <coughs> Maya Manushaha Vigraha. One of the names of the Lord, as Ganav Sarambhattacharya, is Maya Manushaha Vigraha. That it appears that he is a human being, he is a Manusha, but he is not a Manusha. Huh? Again, Avajanati Mahamudha, he is not a human being, he is his God, he has come in a human form to be with all of us. <clears throat> so, all the details were given about how, you know, we will talk, we will, maybe Shrupa will tell us tomorrow about all the various details about what was there in, in the horoscope. But more importantly, we understand that through the entire childhood and through his birth, it was very evident what the Lord was coming for. He wanted to really get the people to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. They were chanting in the time of his birth. When he was there, you can see in this drama, he was, people, when he was always crying, 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 crying. No twice worked, no food worked, nothing worked, nothing, nothing. Only thing which worked is the loud chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram. And through the entire Bali Leela and then of course primarily the Pogandi Leela where he entered school, this is his Leela of scholarship. But he was, by the time he was 15 years old, he was the most powerful scholar in the entire Navadvipi. He had defeated the most acclaimed Keshav Kashmiri. So he had reached the climax of his career as a defeater of Kesha Kashmir, there was nobody else to defeat anymore. He was Dik Vijay Pandit already at the age of 15 years. But the, 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 in, people go through some you know, uh, life-changing events in their, in, in their existence. Something, I met this person, this changed my life. I read this book and this changed my life. I met this, you know, something happened in that, I had this accident and changed my life, like that. So what was the changing event of Mahaprabhu's life? What really changed him from a big scholar, a proud, arrogant scholar who was willing to just defeat anybody and grab him, get into argument and defeat him, <clears throat> almost like massacre him in his, you know, through his academic scholarship. The event was the meeting with Sri Ishwara Puri. On the British of going to Gaya for the shrad of his father, Janda Mishra, huh, he meets this great Saint Ishwara Puri. Why did the Lord accept Ishwara Puri as his eternal spiritual master. It's very important to understand also. Because Ishwara Puri's 
example each and every associate of the lord is here to depict a very special quality which is important for all of us to understand and emulate in ishwara puri we find a quality of complete submission to the will of shri guru and willingness to perform all menial services for his divine pleasure cleaning someone's stool and urine and nursing him and bathing him and feeding him not something everyone would like to do you would employ somebody else like a aya or maushi to do that but his own hands he did this to his guru maharaj and he helped his guru maharaj in terms of any was a need he was in an invalid situation because of his disease of his body he read for him the bhagavatam reminded him of krishna and served him with such selfless love so anyone who serves devotees becomes very dear to krishna in fact this is the two central message of mahaprabhu's life tagvandam das tagore has given this mandate for all of us to follow for all life to come now and in the future if we just perform two things in our life we will also go back to the royal road of and the kingdom of god what are those two things simply chanting the hari krishna mantra and serving the vaishnavas in fact sri thakur says there are two yuga dharmas in this world the one which is already known to all of us as popular the chanting of maha mantra and the second yuga dharma is serving the vaishnavas huh? these are the two most important yuga dharmas of this world and both are complementary you cannot do one without the other you cannot be chanting hari krishna mantra 64 rounds and not willing to serve when the service is given to you and even if you are serving 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 servant serving right the willing, the, the attitude to properly serve comes when the lord manifests his holy name in your heart so both are actually equally complementary like the true tracks of a of of, of a railway track serving vaishnavas and chanting hari krishna mantra are absolutely the foundational principles of sadhana bhakti and as a corollary offending vaishnavas is the easiest way to lose the mercy of the holy name hmm? we can if you offend vaishnavas which comes from pride and criticism then no matter how many rounds we chant of the maha mantra there will be absolutely no effect not only no effect it will destroy the very creeper of bhakti lata beach it will destroy it if you keep on chanting hari krishna mantra by offending devotees your bhakti lata beach gets destroyed <clears throat> so these are two important things which we always carry in the, in the core of our hearts so having done this menial service to his guru maharaj <coughs> shri gora mahaprabhu accepted shri puri has his beloved gurudev and from him he got what the hari krishna mantra and moment he chanted the first mantra there was a rapture in his body he erupted into a volcano as if like this is a volcano sitting in mahaprabhu's heart he was apparently covered by his you know atheistic arrogance because of his scholarship and the moment the maha mantra entered his heart it broke that cover apparent cover of created by his so called apparent arrogance and his uh, pride as a scholar and moment that was broken open his real heart just erupted to the surface <clears throat> and he got into ecstasy and he fell down crying tears of love and become unconscious and from that day on by the time he came to navadeep he was a completely god intoxicated person and now he could not no longer teach in a school so he came to him said we were they came to learn from nimai pandit but they could not could not teach them hmm? so you please go to some other other teacher and learn whatever you have to learn but he could they could not go to anybody else having tasted the nectar of learning from the supreme akhinda jagat guru mahaprabhu is not just a teacher of grammar he is akhila jagat guru is guru the entire creation including brahma and shiva learning from that person if you have such a person as your teacher who would go to any other inferior substitute everyone said okay if you don't teach us we're going to wind up our books and we're not going to teach we're going to learn any more <clears throat> said you are always chanting maha mantra with this you are chanting how do we really all teach also this chanting for the first time in the descent of mahaprabhu at the age of 15 or 16 years the lord spoke the maha mantra only earlier once he had given the maha mantra in private to tapan mishra in bangladesh but this was the first kirtan performed by gora mahaprabhu for it is historically important to note huh? what are the first words emanating from his mouth as he chanted the maha mantra 
हरिहराय नम कृष्ण यादवाय नम हरिहराय नम कृष्ण यादवाय नम गोपाल गोविंद राम श्री मधुसूदा हे गोपाल गोविंद राम श्री मधुसूदा दिस इज द फर्स्ट कीर्तन संग फ्रॉम द लोटस लिप्स ऑफ करताल वलम कलकंठ रवम फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम दिस ब्यूटिफुल मेलोडियस साउंड ऑफ हिस कंठ इज द फर्स्ट कीर्तन ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड Hari Harai Nama Krishna. A special, special song, again recounted by Thakurdas Tum Das in his bhajan. And of course, the events go further now. The Mahaprabhu is into a got intoxicated person. He became so popular. Then we saw about the Chand Kazi episode. But now the most important, earth-shattering event, which shook the entire world, uh, was the sannyas of Gorang Mahaprabhu. now the lord was embarking on his mission he did not want to remain in the confines of navadeep with his family with his friends and with his associates and his followers and students he had to really carry the <clears throat> the treasure house of love of god into the world which was waiting to give please remember the lord has come to fulfill two purposes external and internal and these are not done separately both of them have been done simultaneously it is not that he does one and then the other they just happening simultaneously he wants to taste the nectar of the love <clears throat> therefore course we understand there are three reasons of mahap to descent internally <clears throat> what is that the first is the greatness and the glory of shrimati radhanani's love the second is what is it which is within him his own sweetness which shrimati radhanani tastes through her love the third thing is the nature of happiness the extent of happiness where adarani feels when she loves him these are three internal reasons this are the three things which krishna could not understand even as krishna during the krishna leela so the all knowing sarvagya lord cannot understand these three deep <coughs> tatvas or situations to fulfill that need of his heart he has come as the internal reasons of his descent and for there are three external reasons we all know we should we, we should definitely remember today and first of all is the most important is the loud cries of shri advait acharya second is his promise in the bhagavad gita to come every yuga and third is to establish yuga dharma which is also that proper time to establish in sequence yes it is so it's like a allotted job so he does that also <clears throat> but now the sanyas had to take place because he had to really now go out into the world so we can see now there is a explosion which is taking place in mahaprabhu's heart mura gupta is saying don't go sachi mata is saying don't go dadar pandit is saying don't go mukunda is saying they all crying holding back mahaprabhu do not go the same mahaprabhu stayed back for more than a year in jagannath puri because he should not go to vrindavan or jagannath or, or go to south india was being held back by the loving ropes of sachi mata but he denied even those ropes all his intimate associates were saying please do not take sanyas and leave us but this time mahaprabhu would not listen why why is he deliberately breaking the hearts of his devotees who are begging him pleading him urging him crying rolling on the ground do not take sanyas and do not leave us we will die before when you go the first one to die will be sachi mata sir so saying when she dies i will die then advaita will die and everyone will die so when you come back you will find nobody will be here why do you want to kill all of us by taking sanyas the lord did not listen why the power of the lord's compassion it is the love of the mother of shrimati radharani who wants to inundate her children with the type of love as she experiences for sri krishna that is radharani's love exploding from mahaprabhu's heart antar it is uh, Ondar Krishna Bahir Gauranga. Huh? Radharani wants to give that love, which is her exclusive commodity of her heart, to all her beloved children of this world. There is no way to get love other than from the reservoir of love that is Sri Madhuri Radharani. She is the abode, the niketan of love, the nimas of love, 
Krishna is the <coughs> object of love. So all love has to come from our mother, for our father. And she wants to give this to the whole world. And therefore she cannot be held back by the love of even Sachi Mata. So the events take place in such a way, the Lord is running, running in the middle of the night, leaving behind Vishnu Priya to cry for the rest of her life. She lived for 96 years. And she, she was 14 and the Lord left and she lived for 96 years, all her life, simply crying for 82 years in separation. Huh? He left her 14 January, huh? <clears throat> Magha Sankranti. The sun rises to the north. He rushed to the Ganga and reached Kantak Nagar. And he begged Kesha Kashmiri, uh, Kesha Bharati, please give me sannyas. But he said, You're a 24 year old boy, there's no, no question. You know, nobody takes sannyas at 24. And look at your form, look at your beauty. I mean, this is just impossible. The Lord begged, pleaded. When the Lord has something to do, to, to, to fulfill, who can really stop him? His will is supreme. He couldn't stop him. <clears throat> and Yashua Bharati understood that. I cannot stop this boy from taking sannyas. The Lord is sitting there and they call the barber to cut his hair. Now these are the very, very, very intense events in Mahaprabhu's life. He's just waiting to take sannyas. He wants to wear those robes of a sannyas. He's so bad. <clears throat> wants to have the shaven head and just go out here and there everywhere giving love of God to all living beings in this world. Humans, plants, animals, anyone. Jangam, Stavar, Jangam, everybody. <clears throat> They're cutting his hair. First of all, Madhushil could not even hold the razor. How can I cut this hair? His hair are the essence of beauty. They glorified by Brahma and Shiva. He could not cut he was crying, crying, crying. He had become paralyzed. He just could not move towards Mahaprabhu's head. The Lord had to practically empower him from within to, to cut his hair. And as he was cutting the hair, a few locks fell to the ground. And the whole town of Kantanagar went into, into raptures of crying intensely, rolling on the ground, beating the chest. Why are you doing this? And in between the whole ceremony, the Lord just jumps up, chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. He's in much anticipation. Huh? I want to take sannyas. But the hair is still not fully cut. So he comes back and sits down again. <laughs> it's only half shaven. He comes back again. And the rest of the hair is twist to be cut. Hmm? And everyone is crying, rolling in the dust. Oh, can anyone stop this? The hair has been cut. The hair has been cut. And, and Mahaprabhu is so happy. He's just so happy. Probably the happiest he has been in his life. Because now he's fulfilling the purpose of his very descent. And he rushes inside and comes back with his beautiful form, the Shivan Sanyasi. Huh? And he's given this Sanyas name. What is Sanyas name? Sri Krishna Chaitanya. That personality who gives Chaitanya, who gives consciousness of Sri Krishna. That is your prime objective in this world. Your name is, will be Sri Krishna Chaitanya. And the Lord is completely free to move around wherever He wants. The pastimes are very long and elaborate. However, to, show, to get, an, get an essence of His compassion, we need to recount a little bit of His compassion which took place at the Jerikanda forest. Where the, where the Lord is now, Thakur Bhakti in 1885 wrote this particular prophetic words. He said, the Lord descent in this world is not just for Bengal or India. It is for the emancipation of all living entities in all countries, in all planets, through the entire universe. This is the prophetic words of Thakur Bhakti we know. So here the Lord is passing through Jharikanda forest. And such miracles which we have, the world has never seen. The tigers, the lions, the elephants just move aside <laughs> and allow the Lord to walk through. He is absorbed. For him, every forest is Vrindavan, every river is Jamuna, and every mountain is Govardhan. Because he sees, because he is absorbed in Vrindavan, that place actually becomes Vrindavan. Because what the Lord sees is reality. 
because he is the supreme reality is vastava vastu huh? when he thinks something is vrindavan jarikhand is not long, no longer jarikhand it becomes vrindavan so jarik the vrindavan the vrindavan mood manifest in these animals and they lose their ferocity elephants tigers just move off from the way the lord is walking and you see the tiger is in the road just sleeping the lord touches him with his lotus feet and says chant hare krishna the tiger starts chanting hare krishna <laughs> <laughs> and he goes further is doing his bath is sending his sandhya gayatri out of elephants come there mad elephants we heard of mad elephant offense right they can destroy that same mad elephant you know, wild mad elephant they come to drink their own water also lord takes a pumpful of water and says Shh, chant hare krishna <laughs> and the elephants are chanting hare krishna <laughs> we cannot do like maharaj <laughs> So we won't even try. <laughs> so elephants start turning Hare Krishna. Tears start flowing from the eyes of the elephant, and start rolling in the mud. Who can do this? Who can give love of God in an instant to mad elephants? Hmm? The Lord walks further the next day, and does come, and the Lord they come to the Lord because they are all attracted to the Lord's melody singing. The Lord is. caressing them and he thinks of brindavan he quotes some shlokas of brindavan quoted by the gopis then tigers coming also tigers also come the doves come the deers come both are walking it tells the tigers chant hare krishna it tells the deers chant hare krishna and now there is such a kirtan of the deer the rhinoceros the bulls the wild buffaloes the dogs the snakes the peacocks all are chanting loudly beautifully hare krishna hare krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare The tiger and the deer are kissing each other <laughs> Who can do this right Those divine footprints of the Lord are still there in Jarikanda to be seen <clears throat> Our dear devotee Rupa Raghunath Prabhu told me when he came back from the book distribution party there that even now that sacred rocks are there where the lord danced with his lotus feet and melting those rocks with the love of his heart those impressions embossed impressions of melted rocks are still there at jarikhand one day we can go there for a yatra <laughs> and take the dust of those feet of those impressions what is the lord's principal teachings what has he come to teach very important three things बोलो कृष्णा भजो कृष्णा गोरो कृष्णा शिखा दीज आर दे थ्री थिंग्स विच हैज कम टू टीच द वर्ल्ड स्पीक अबाउट कृष्णा बोलो कृष्णा भजो कृष्णा वर्शिप कृष्णा एंड कोरो कृष्णा शिखा स्टडी लर्न अबाउट कृष्णा इज द ओनली थ्री एक्टिविटीज ऑफ अ डिवोटी एंड नथिंग मोर एवरी अदर एक्टिविटी of a grihastha or a brahmachari or a vanaprasthi or a sanyasi or a professional or whatever else is simply to be coordinated in such a way that it assists these three primary activities of speaking about krishna worshiping krishna and learning about krishna when these three activities grow to a level of maturity they manifest as three levels of perfection <clears throat> what are they individually you develop nama ruchi when you chant krishna mantra then you develop nama ruchi that nama ruchi manifest again as a desire to serve because the purpose of nam is to manifest seva bhav the chanting of hari krishna mantra is not an end in itself it is a sadhana the sadhya is to evoke back our own swarupa the most beautiful line ever spoken in creation is probably this jivera swarup hoy krishna ra nitya das there is no spiritual truth which in my mind <coughs> excels in exposition of fundamental principles of existence one of this one line you understand that goswami lord chaitanya it reveals the entire spectrum of the conclusion of all vedic knowledge 
Jivaraswa, that we are all jivas, we are not this body. We have a surupa, we are not impersonal. We are all Christ, and the Krishna Supreme Master, we have Godhead. We are all his servants in the conditioned state or in the liberated state. We are Nitya Das. Of course, there is much more to understanding this sloka in more detail. But this is the essence. So when you chant Hare Krishna Mantra, this Swarupa gets evoked. So second perfection arises from Namaruchi. What is that? Vaishnava Seva. You want to serve Vaishnavas with your heart, with your love, with your money, with your time, with your counsel, with your sympathy. In, on, in whatever way we can, we want to serve the Vaishnavas in a selfless manner. When that perfection extends further, when you get blessing of the Vaishnavas <coughs> through Vaishnava Seva, when you get blessing of the Lord through, Namar, through Namaruchi, then third perfection arises. What is that? Jivodaya. Hmm? So we, it starts from Namaruchi, extends to the Vaishnava community of serving the Vaishnavas, and that love now extends not only for the Vaishnavas, but extends for all living beings. And then you develop Jivodaya. You become an instrument in the hands of the Lord to show compassion to all living beings. The entire parampara beginning from Mahaprabhu Chaitanya, then the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, and down the line, Chakrati Thakur, Babaji Maharaj, Bhakti Vinod, they are simply a beautiful chain of those pure souls who descend from the spiritual world with this, who have become instruments of the Lord's compassion. We can see in all of them, they have Namaruchi, Vaishnav Seva, and most importantly, manifest quality is <coughs> Jivodaya. <coughs> this God Pune festival was celebrated after after this event took place, the Mayapur was covered over for many years. The Lord wanted to give his, his, you know, his mercy to his devotees to excavate back to Mayapur. So again, it's, the history goes down and instead of excavating Mayapur again, the birth of the Lord's, the, the place of the Lord's appearance goes to Thakur Bhakti Vinod. We know the whole story. There will be a drama tomorrow on that event of the place was excavated by Thakur Bhakti Vinod. And the big temple was built by Saradhi Thakur and Bhakti Vinod there. And... Uh, Srila Prabhupada was so eager to start Gaur Purnima in Iskon. The most important event in his life was to start Gaur Purnima. Why? Because of the prophecy of his predecessor Acharyas. In 1896, the prophecy was made. Huh? Long, long, it is not long, long in history now that there will be a time very soon where Europeans, Americans, huh? Italians, Germans, French will come together in the land of Mahavdeep and chant loudly, Jai Sachinandana Gaur Hari! Yes! This is the universal church which was envisioned by Thakur Bhakti Vinod. Beyond temples and mosques and cathedrals and synagogues, the universal church of chanting the holy names of Krishna would be the all-binding force which, which unites everybody into the largest family of Sri Krishna. A worldwide community of devotees would soon arise. Vision of Thakur Bhakti Vinod. He wanted to put that actually prophecy into <coughs> a palpable reality. Prabhupada sitting on his desk. He had sent Balibardhan uh, Maharaj and Tamakshan Maharaj to buy this land in Mayapur. Nine bigger of land from Sheikh Brothers. There was no answer for six days. Prabhupada was in anxiety. In the middle of the night, all Brahmacharya sleeping in Calcutta. Prabhupada was sitting on his desk translating, reading from a Bengali version of <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam. Commentary of the previous Acharyas. He is in deep anxiety. Why my sons, my disciples have not come with the finished deal of buying this nine bigger of land. At that time it cost 14,500 rupees. <laughs> Probably today it will cost 14 lakhs at least. <clears throat> and there's two wonderful devotees come in the middle of the night, the staircase, there's loud sounds of the footsteps and say, Prabhupada. Yes, Prabhupada said, what, what is the news? Prabhupada, the land is yours. Okay, go and take rest. The Maharaj Maharaj did the impossible. <clears throat> the land was now belonged to Srila Prabhupada. This was 1971. The month of March. Prabhupada's heart started exploding with ideas to develop Sri, Sri Mayapur Dham now. He went to London and from there London started giving ideas. We'll have a big temple there. The first Gaur Purnima of Iskwan was to be planned. 1972, 29th February was the Gaur Purnima of 1917. The first Gaur Purnima, <coughs> which is now going to be the fulfillment of the vision of all the Acharyas, the vision of the Lord, 
the creating of the tsunami was now really happening it was not just a local event of bengal or nodip district it was going to be a world wide event the obscure mayabo not even seen on the maps practically was no longer going to be obscure for it is the center of the spiritual the spiritual center of the entire universe what appears like center like australia america or japan or germany are absolutely <clears throat> god for second places the most important place for all of us is shri dham mayapur build nice guest houses call 500 devotees from all over let there be nice big prasadam distributions <clears throat> 24 hour kirtan for there's a five day festival with meager facilities lots of mosquitoes and inconvenience but it was still geared up from living in the small thatched half of just maybe 100 square feet living in probably said i would not mind staying it i would not want to stay in big big palaces i'm just so happy to stay in this small hut forever in mayapur hmm? because for him now he was seeing the spiritual city which was being envisioned by tagore bhakti vinod is coming it's going to happen huh? <clears throat> it's becoming a reality so from then onwards in 72 mayapur dham the first gaur purnima down to so many years now we all gather together every year huh, to celebrate this most blessed event and the mood of being beggars we do not have any qualification to get mahaprabhu's mercy such a rare incarnation of the lord we have absolutely no qualification and anyone can understand this very clearly what is it which we have done to earn the type of love to becoming even a brahma of this universe you have to perform 1000 cycles of lifetimes of perfectly following the varnashram dharma to become even a brahma of this universe and we cannot even follow one lifetime of perfect varnashram to become an indra you to perform 1000 ashramadi yagyas in this universe huh? to talk about perfection to go beyond vaikuntha what have we really done to get the type of love which is expressed by shrimati radharani in the gopis absolutely nothing just nothing very plain and simple but we can only beg with a begging bowl made of the commodity of humility the bowl is not of iron or gold the bowl is made up of the quality of humility we have to only beg the lord has come holy name is given books have been given navdeep is excavated uh, mahaprabhu lila is already told in the in the in the scriptures everything is already given everything is ready on the silver platter the only thing required from our side now the minimal thing which we have to do is to give up our false ego and with faith accept mahaprabhu's mercy shraddha matra loin den paramo ananda we need to develop this implicit faith in the lord's mercy in the mercy of our eternal lords radha and gopinath <clears throat> implicit faith in the words of shri prabhu pad that this is the golden <clears throat> moments of our eternal life we may have gone through so many things in our past life who even cares what was happening in the past but now we are here we are here to cry lolyam ekamatra moolam we have to cry for this eagerness to receive this speck of love which mahaprabhu is freely giving it and fully giving all the panchatas freely giving this love of god huh? <clears throat> by simply chanting with humility this simple maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 we we'll end by a small analogy which <coughs> impressed my heart we going to perform aarti now of the lordships in a short while the maha aarti the most important aarti of the entire year <coughs> the lamp the flame of the lamp represents the lolium the longing of a desire to love the lord that is represented by the flame which you offer in aarti at our homes when the aarti during kartik month to damodar bhagwan and to the lord ships here that flame represents the longing to really deeply genuinely purely love krishna love shri radha love guru maharaj and love panchatatva that flame represents a desire a longing to love the ghee which empowers the wick which energizes the wick which energizes the flame of longing is our desire to serve the vaishnavas 
and I chanting of Hare Krishna mantra. The more we chant offenselessly, purely, the more we serve the Vaishnavas with implicit pure hearts, this energizes the wick with the ghee. And the more it is energized by this fuel, the more stronger becomes this flame of our longing. As this fire of the flame becomes stronger and stronger and stronger, the power of fire is to destroy. This flame then destroys our false ego, destroys all the in inabilities and wrong desires within our heart. And as all these wrong desires get destroyed, the flame then allows the Lord to be seen within our heart. Sparatuva, <clears throat> within the core of our heart, Ridaya Kandare, who is there? The Lord is there. This flame will destroy all the anarthas and then we can see Radha and Krishna. We can see Gopinath, we can see Gauranga Mahaprabhu right in the core of our heart. Hmm? <clears throat> so we want to keep this flame on by constant chanting and constant serving. This is the only goal of our lives. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.